G'day, how are you going Natalie? I'm good, how are you? I'm very good. Um, so here we are at Friends of the Earth on 312 Smith Street, Collingwood. Yes, that's right. And you're on one of the coordinators of the bookshop. Can you tell me just a little bit about the bookshop? Okay, the bookshop is um, very much the front of foe in Melbourne, along with the food co-op. So it's the first thing people kind of see when they walk into Friends of the Earth, which is obviously really important. We play an integral role with the campaigns, which are campaign offices are upstairs, but also the Faux Bookshop is a specialist bookshop that focuses on environmental, um, politics, alternative technologies, women's issues, spirituality, health, children's, and a variety of other things as well. Um, but importantly, the bookshop, along with the food co-op, are run by volunteers mainly. So myself and Sarah, the other coordinator, um, we coordinate volunteers to come in here every day. And um, I think that's what makes it quite special. Thank you. Yeah, so what, what are we going to do? Different magazines to do with politics and social justice, um, local, local kind of politics like arena. Yeah. Um, also environmental magazines as well. Um, yeah. And then we have a variety of stickers, which are all sort of, you know, to do with different campaigns that are going on. Yeah. Um, Latest newsletters. Yeah, newsletters with different campaigns and things, and some more, more general stickers, I guess. So yeah. That, that aren't specifically aimed at one campaign. This is our new title section, which also down here we've got our general fiction and modern classics, which is not, it's a smaller section of the bookstore. Yeah. Uh, we also have videos and CDs, and the videos up there you can see you've got Woomera, um, Not In Our Name, Fight For Country, so they're all kind of politically aligned all from our actions and protests that have happened in the past. Yep. Uh, we also have, this is our environment section here, and we also have Friends of the Earth publications like the Goodwood and Paper Guide, which is really important that FO continues their own publications. Moving right along, we have Natural History and also a really good range of, sort of nutrition, you know, different cooking books that might relate to macrobiotic or vegetarian, etc. etc. Yeah. And uh, we also have just a small section on spirituality where there's a few shops along Smith Street that focus mainly on spirituality, so yeah. we try and sort of cover what they don't have. We also have a small section in sort of women's issues as well. And then there's gardening and farming. Yeah. And here we've got our stationery, um, which is all environmental um, papers and sort of books and things like that. Um, yeah, our children's section, which is, you know, specifically looking at, at environmental issues and issues that, that, you know, children should know on a day-to-day -day basis, like water and energy. Um, this is the sales section here. <laughs> So it's different to sales books. Um, we often have, you know, obviously we're in the middle of the year, so our calendars are on sale. Um, but we always have a good range of different calendars and diaries. For yeah. Um, we also have our t-shirts, which focus on different campaigns, um, which also means that the money from these t-shirts um, feed back into those campaigns as well. So you've got everything from, you know, uh, anti-uranium to Barmamilua, which is one of the indigenous campaigns. Yeah. And then we also have non-book stock, which is usually just local people um, making products, you know, from not just the candles to incense, um, a, few, a few different sort of things that we have. Excellent. We have a big sale on. <laughs> yeah. And um, our last three sections. Alternative technology, which is really important to people who are looking at maybe building um, with different materials and trying to do it as environmental as possible and tune with everything. Which is reasonably broad, it covers from Australian politics to sort of development to political philosophy. <laughs> and finally, we have an Indigenous section which I think is definitely always a very strong area in the bookshop. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks very much. That was no great. Worries. Perfect. <laughs> hey guys. What is notice board man? Yeah. And and over there on the window outside is another notice board which has got all the share accommodation stuff. We've got petitions over here.
all kinds of things you can put your name to. And food co-op. Well, if you did this, Friendly volunteer is, is going to tell me what, what's for lunch today. Well, today we had uh, some hot hummus. We also had some rice, which uh, was actually very, very nice today. Had some stir fried veggies, lettuce, yeah. and even a bit of uh, fried tofu as well on the side. Um, yeah. How much is the all organic lunch? Uh, Five dollars for a medium sized plate or uh, six dollars for a large one. Beautiful. Thanks for that. What's it like being a volunteer at Foe? Actually, it's really exciting, really. It's lots of fun. Uh, you get to uh, drink as much coffee as you want, which is very dangerous at times. But uh, no, it's a lovely atmosphere and really nice people. Excellent. Thanks very much. Sure. Alright. What's in all these tubs over here, Was? Um, oh, you've got all your whole feeds in here. It's done on a minimal packaging um, basis where you bring in your bags, your jars, whatever. Um, they don't package anything. You just basically take the product out of the main container and put it into your package. And then, such as this woman is doing just here. Alright. Now. And here we are up in the campaign space. We've got a whole range of flyers going on from all sorts of different uh, campaigns. And this, at the top of the stairs, is the big meeting space where you can make yourself a cup of tea, get a glass of water, and mostly we have meetings. So you write the agenda up on the board, they're all facilitated, you've got use of video if you want to put on video. And coming from the meeting room into the campaign centre itself, at the front desk, it was. Hey, was. Hi. I'm sitting at the reception desk here. This is where all the telephone calls come through, and the messages get written down in the telephone message book. Excellent. It's the first stop, at friends of the year. First point of contact with the office. Thanks, was. Now we'll we'll go on into the campaign space. Here's oh, Cam Walker, oh, pro legend. Are you right? You're coming to uh, talk to you in a sec. And the office computer space. G'day. Um, the meeting is, did you get that email from me? Yeah, but not the details. Yeah, yeah no worries. Yeah. So um, I just took it as a uh, campaign desk. I'm pretty sure about drumming and stuff. Hi. G'day, Val. Hello. <laughs> and here we have the forest desk dinner. Uh, g'day, this is Damien. W which campaign are you working on, Damien? I work on the, um, as part of the International Trade, Environment and Sustainability campaign. Yeah. And what I do is I do a role with the, there's about 25, 30 groups involved in the international campaign and I help to coordinate that campaign from Australia. There's also, there's an actual coordinator in England and regional coordinators in uh, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa. What is a GATT? A GATT? Yeah. Well, the GATT is the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. Yeah. It's a system of rules for governing world trade. And there's also GATS, which is the General Agreement on Trade in Services. So that's oh, about okay. services trade, like water, electricity. And I guess it's generated a lot of controversy because the World Trade Organization was established in 1995. And that set up a whole lot of new rules about world trade. And a lot of people are saying that they're rules that favour business over kind of people and the environment. Wow, perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I introducing Ben, just to show that you can bump into celebrities of all kinds here at Friends of the Earth, the drummer from the Cape Reilly Band. <laughs> and currently working <laughs> campaigner on, on what was it? Oh, well, I'm doing um, campaign work for the Obama campaign, but what I'm working on now is a bit separate and doing an internship uh, on water policy within the Murray-Darling Basin. Basically, the, the government, or all the governments, are intending to um, enact trade liberalisation uh, and release environmental flows into the Murray-Darling Basin. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking into the social environmental effects. 
So how how do you see it going? Um, well, there's going to be a white paper uh, which uh, Coag will release in about a month's time. Oh yeah. And and that um, well, I guess what's on the table is uh, kind of to call releasing um, perpetual licensing for the irrigators, so that it's like a trade-off. They'll have uh, a greater degree of certainty with their allocations. And then, um, and, and then that'll supposedly uh, lead to more efficient allocation of water, and and then the the, the government will probably buy back water for the environment. But um, ah, so like the RFAs, there's putting in something that's just going to cost the government money and inhibit environment protection. Would that be right? Um, yeah, it's looking looking that way, and also it doesn't really account for future uncertainty, such as. Uh, climate change and how that could reduce flows yeah. uh, and, and also scientific uncertainty like the, the amount that, like, the, there's no consensus on how much water needs to be released into the Murray-Darling Basin and it's I think it's relatively likely that in the future scientists will probably think that the, the river needs a lot more water for it for, uh, to be healthy yes. so yeah it's a, it's a tough one for sure excellent, thanks for that no worries Tony yeah. And sitting here at the forest desk, my name's Tony Hastings, I work on the GIS campaign, which is a geographic information system, which seeks to get detailed scientific data and provide it to the campaigns in a way that supports them. For example, um, defining what is rainforest, how it's surveyed for, and whether or not they currently meet the requirement to protect rainforest, which they don't. Um, I go through things such as field work, um, going out and surveying for things, um, taking GPS points, capturing that data and putting it into the mapping computer. I uh, recently completed a submission to the wood utilisation plan, which um, basically says they shouldn't go ahead with their proposed clear felling regime. And I work with the Victorian Rainforest Network in producing scientific reports and conducting surveys, and we're setting up to do another rainforest survey over winter. Um, also helping support the Goolingook campaign with the claim that that should be protected in National Park. Um, we've completed articles for um, the recent Swinburne newsletter and I'm doing a detailed geographic analysis of the Year and Under Plateau based on government data, the data I've collected, aerial and satellite photos to try and identify the high conservation value areas which should be protected by current policy and law and achieve that protection. Okay, this is Cam Walker, who's a long-time volunteer or paid uh, staff here at Prince. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so your, your name appears on just about every list if you need more information, see Cam Walker. Sure. Um, I'm approaching you today to understand the structure of Friends of the Earth and, and how it works. Could Yep, <laughs> it's actually quite complex. It's very simple, but it's complex. And it's complex in that we're in 68 countries. There's 5,000 local branches and 1.1 million members around the world. So it's quite an enormous structure. Each of the 68 member groups are all independent. They meet criteria that are set by the International Federation, but they're all incredibly different. They answer to what's called the BGM, the Biennial General Meeting, which is held every two years in a different country around the world. And they need to meet particular criteria about how they operate. Uh, the national level groups, of which Friends of the Earth Australia is the, obviously the Australian representative, um, meets twice a year and that's where we determine how well we're functioning or whether we are or not, how we campaign, how we raise our funds. And then of the 12 local groups that make up Friends of the Earth Australia, Friends of the Earth Melbourne is the largest and that's where we're based. Uh, we, uh, make, uh, we run ourselves, we make our own decisions, we uh, fundraise, we put on staff, we do all that type of thing. But again, we meet the criteria that are set by the National Federation and by the International Federation. So effectively it's a series of autonomous units from the international level down. So it's different to other large environmental groups that might have a head office in Europe uh, or in North America. Wow, this building and this campaign office is the biggest and most successful in Australia. What, what do you attribute that success to? Um, I think we've always been really well hooked into the activist community in Melbourne. I think we've been reasonably open and accessible to other community groups. We've always had a practice and a philosophy of encouraging other groups to work from here. So Melbourne Tarkine Action Group is here at the moment. There's been everything from the New Left Party through to uh, uh, Peace Groups, through to Rainforest Action Group in its day. A whole lot of groups come in and use this space. So we try and not just be an organisation operating in 
isolation, but we try and be a group that encourages community level work. And that means a lot of people come through the building. It also means that uh, there's a lot of goodwill for the organisation, even if people don't work here, even if they're not members, often they'll support us when we need help. So that, over time, I think has built up a culture whereby it is quite effective. There's always new people coming in and there's always history. There's always people who are here who know what's going on. And because we are very grassroots and community orientated, we can operate for almost nothing. We have two businesses downstairs that basically pay the rent on the building. Most of the work that's done up here is done by volunteers and we have a really good supporter network. So it's just a good place where people can come, can do good activist work, but uh, we, hopefully without too much bureaucracy and, and too much kind of difficulty in terms of fitting in. Excellent. Wow, that was brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Cam. Oh, no worries. Okay. Good day. See ya. See ya. There's quite a few what we call campaign collectives here at Friends of the Earth, who meet here in, in the meeting room. Um, they include the Action for Peace, which works on militarism issues. There's the Barma Willowa campaign, which is working in solidarity with the Yorta Yorta people on the Murray River, following their loss in the High Court for a native title claim. They recently had a victory achieving cooperative management with the Brax government in that area. There's an Environment and Pollution Collective, which contributes an international environmentalist perspective into debates such as immigration, population and refugee issues and uh, acknowledges consumption, ecological debt and our ecological footprint uh, as key issues in that debate. There's the Food Campaign, which runs the food co-op we saw downstairs. The Forest Network, of which I'm a subset with the GIS project. And mostly we've been looking at East Gippsland and the Lecky Ranges but we're, we're not limited to that at all. We can deal with international rainforest issues or any issue which any volunteer walks in here and puts on the table. There's a trade and globalisation campaign group which um, Damien was speaking about before. Friends of Earth also organised Wild Spaces which is an environment, uh, sorry, an Australia-wide environmental film festival. Um, they also produced a quarterly magazine called Chain Reaction and the Melbourne office here produces a regular newsletter. We've also got a pretty good web presence which uh, includes Flow International and lots of different little member groups and has some stuff from each of these campaign groups. Thank you.